Okay, so I'm running that experiment. It started in 1957, then we instantaneously doubled the CO2 concentration, and uh, now we're letting the model equilibrate to that instantaneously doubling of CO2, and when it comes into equilibrium, uh, it should have warmed by an amount that is consistent with the sensitivity of this particular model. Uh, and again, this is the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies uh, climate model uh, from the 1980s that was used in a series of uh, famous experiments um, by James Hansen, by climate scientist James Hansen. So we're running the model. Um, I've been running this uh, for several days, in fact, and as you can see, I'm now all the way uh, up through September uh, 2012. So we started out in December 1957. Uh, the models now reach September 2012, and as you can see, I get about one simulation day per second. So it takes the, uh, the better part of a day running this climate model um, to uh, simulate anything approaching a, a century a long time period. Uh, but that's quite fast um, uh, by comparison, say, with um, uh, where uh, things stood in the 1980s um, when it would uh, take that long to run a simulation like this on a state-of-the-art computer. Now we can run it on a desktop. Um, so we're letting the days um, tick off day by day. Um, the model is solving all the equations of motion. It's solving the governing equations of the atmosphere and the ocean. It's calculating the radiative fluxes, um, the incoming solar radiation. It's computing uh, the uh, distribution of uh, infrared radiation within the Earth system, the diffusion of heat into a mixed layer ocean. Um, it's uh, solving the full set of governing three-dimensional equations that describes the coupled ocean atmosphere uh, cryosphere system. Uh, the ocean in this model is fairly simple. Uh, by modern standards, uh, today climate models of this sort simulate uh, the complex motions of the ocean currents. Uh, uh, this particular model uh, treats the ocean simply as a slab of water with an appropriate amount of thermal inertia. It can absorb heat. It can give up heat to the atmosphere. Uh, it re can respond to radiative imbalances. Um, there is a parameterization uh, of uh, heat transport. So the ocean transports a certain amount of heat poleward, uh, as we know it needs to. Uh, but uh, that uh, heat transport is fixed. It's not variable as it is in modern day climate models which allow for changes in the intensity of the ocean currents. So the ocean is pretty primitive uh, by modern standards and many of the components of this model are in fact primitive by the standards of state-of-the-art models today. But uh, as we'll see, uh, this model uh, is sophisticated enough to have made some surprisingly accurate predictions. Okay, so uh, we're closing in on the end of 2012, um, and what I'll do is I'll let this model uh, run out uh, to the end of 2012, so I have one more complete year of data, and then we'll start looking at the output of this climate model simulation.